Welcome back. The Cultural Mediation in Italy, 1861, the foundation of the Italian state. The Italian state was founded in 1861. In the first civil procedure code, 1865, the heading of the seven introductory articles was conciliation. I repeat, the heading of the seven introductory articles was conciliation. Recourse to conciliation before conciliatory judges was optional for all disputes concerning civil rights. A preliminary attempt was compulsory only for personal legal separation between married couples. The predator, first ever judge, had to attempt conciliation at the first hearing at which the parties came. But the priority of everything were the conciliatory judges, who, in addition to their function as peacemakers, were also judicial bodies for small claims. And according to a law issued in the same year, police officers must first of all reconcile conflicts among private citizens. And this principle was reiterated a few decades later in 1931. In 1991, in a royal decree, regulations on prostitution in the interest of public order, public health and morality. A possible conciliation was envisaged in the case of women present in houses of prostitution who intended to return to an honest life. They are presumed to be the owners of their clothes made for their person and so of their personal underwear. But if a difference arises over the ownership of such clothes and underwear or other objects than the woman has for her own, the Public Security Authority will call before it the contending parties in order to attempt to conciliate prostitution. According to law number 261-1892, the judge, in order to reach a conciliation, could call for the single party in a private hearing. I repeat, in or judge, in order to reach a conciliation, could call for the single party in a private hearing. Anyway, an antelitrum caucus. Before the First World War, the Italian bankruptcy law in 1903 also provided for negotiation agreements on the settlements of the debt or crisis under the control of the judge, who, in small claims, could also act as a mediator. According to Judge Marcello Marinari, in the 19th century, Italian conciliators were not judges like any other. They were elected by municipal councils from among people who were highly regarded and in any case of great authority, regardless of their legal competence. And not always, the conciliations of the judges were totally spontaneous and not always satisfactory for the parties, more like a settlement that closed the case on the basis of a suggestions of the judge, often, if not always, referring to requests that came out of the papers of the trial. In short, they were conciliations that fitted into the same scheme as the trial and were directed by the same judge who, in case of failure, would have had to decide the case. The Italian society, moreover, was deeply different from that of the 20th century. It was a poor, predominantly rural country, in which there were individuals who played the role of social conciliators. 
individuals who no longer exist. As Sigmund Bowman tells, quoting Robert Castle, the hypervalorization of the individual, which has taken place in recent decades, has also led with the liberalization from the ties of belonging to family or professional structures to a growing feeling of insecurity and the progressive loss of mutual trust. This is reflecting what is roughly called litigiousness, which is also due to the increasing well-being, great awareness of one's right and less social resignation. Moreover, the totalitarian regime carried out during the fascist period 1922-43 disliked conflict resolutions reached by private citizens. They must be managed by a public authority, the judges, through sentences. As a consequence, since the 1930s, in Italy, mediation gradually lost its importance, as it was no longer taught in universities for over 70 years. Mediation was, and still is, part of the Italian legal tradition, but it was forgotten.